Unity, where is my pause screen? Right. Because it looks for it by tag. And so now it has a reference to it. And so that's what we're doing right here. We have a reference to our pause panel. Hmm. Now, if we can't find it, I just do a little quick error so we know that, uh, hey, I don't have anything in my game with pause. I try right. to, I do this a lot. If I can't find an object I look for in startup, yeah. I will debug that log error and with some details so I know, hey, maybe I'm in integrating this into a new game and I, I missed the requirements here. Okay. So I just kind of be specific here. Missing a game object, tag pause. This is the item shown, yada, yada, yada. Do you know if there's anything different between debug.log and log error? Yeah, so with log error, let me do this, watch this. Are you ready? I would like to see this. Test error. Let's start this guy up, and we are in our level one, and let me just enable that. Ooh, very nice. So, notice on our console here, we have an error that's been logged. This is not just an information log. Yes. It's actually in the warning screen. So this is saying, hey, uh, you've got something you need to pay attention to. This is pretty critical here. Ah, so it kind of stands out a bit more it than stands the rest. out a whole lot more. So let's make sure we get rid of this guy. Next, if we can find it, we just go ahead and we hide it because we don't need it right now. It's our policy screen. So we're just setting uh, set active to false, and all set active does in Unity, you give it true or false. That's the same thing as checking off over here. This guy right here. Okay. So. Set active is essentially the same thing as checking or unchecking that. You pass in true or false. Okay. Makes sense so far? Yeah, it's on All or right. off. All right, cool. Then, if we hit escape, what do we want to do? We're going to tell you we want to do something. So, if we are already paused, we're going to resume our game. Hmm. If we are not already paused and somebody hits escape, we want to okay. pause. Just kind of switching states going back and That's forth. That's it. You got it. All right, so let's go ahead over here and let's run this. And let's see what this looks like. Okay, pause screen. Looks like all the state in the background is not resuming. Now, there's one thing I want to point out here. Yeah. Let's look at what pause does. I was actually just going to ask that. <laughs> Good timing. So, what I do with pause here is I save the original time scale. Time scale is like changing time. Imagine if you were a superhero and okay. you could scale time and change time. Okay. This would be the property assigned to you. It would be uh. it would be David dot time changer dot time scale. All right. So what this does, this is our current time scale. In other words, it's uh, value between zero to one, I believe. My next question. And that tells you how much, how fast is time processing? One is real time. One is how we are yes. experiencing right now. So I'm just saving that value. And then I set it to zero, which stops all physics and stuff going on in the and game. And you're right? saving the value because? I want to restore it afterwards. Ah. So I'm setting time scale equal to zero, and just a little flag so I know I'm paused. Yep. And I'm just making sure that this paused uh, dialogue is now active. Okay. So no, I could have just passed in true there, because I know it's true at this point in time. Yep. And so that shows the dialogue. Then, when you hit escape, and we resume it, what do we do? Say, if you're not paused, now, I could, if you caught what I did real quick in the beginning was here, uh, you can stop all audio from playing if you want. I know uh, some games, when you pause them, they continue to play audio. Right. So I kept it in this case. That's why I just kind of You see how easy it is to really turn it off. Yeah. And so audio down listener, here, is that referring to every audio listener or? That is everything in your game. Ah, okay. Yep. Now, ideally, in, in a scene, you're only supposed to have one audio listener. Right. If you have more than one, Unity will tell you excessively, hey, you have two audio listeners. Okay. Now, this right here is we, were, we are restoring time scale, putting it back to its original value, in this case right. one, and then we're going ahead and hiding our dialogue. So let's see that in its implementation again in Zombie Pumpkin Slayer. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Everything physics has stopped, animations have stopped, everything has stopped. Wow, well, I'm amazed it was that simple. Except now I can come in here and click on continue, or hit escape. Huh. That is extremely easy. Super easy. Yeah. Super, super, super easy. Now, what I did before was we had our Windows build here. Let's go ahead and run that build. Yep. Get our title screen here. Play. Right. 
This is easy. Let's see if I did my. Uh, okay, still playing. And hooked into my vent. Oops, I just closed. There we go. Ah, I died. Way too good. I can't show you. I can't show you this next scene yet. <laughs> the resurrection scene will. We'll One shortly. step at a time. Step, okay. Yes, I, I have that code there. That's why you're seeing it now. But we will. We'll unveil that shortly here. Yeah. So back to this. Super, 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 super easy. Integrating a pause screen adds a little bit to your application to make yeah. it just a little bit. You know, it's one of those finishing touches on here. Okay. In-app purchases. Uh, this, not necessarily as evil as many people may be led to believe. In-app purchases, uh, in my opinion, currently in the state of uh, the game dev economy today, in-app purchases, for the most part, is how you're going to make your money. I agree. Um, if you have a good ad strategy, it's tough, but you could potentially do it that way as well. Right. But in-app purchases, that's where, you, to me, you get kind of the best experience in a game. Right. So let's say I want to do a purchase a weapons pack or I want to purchase some sort of power-up or something like that in a game. Okay. In-app purchases are great. And one of the models that you see today, somebody has a free game they release and then they have an in-app purchase. Um, Tobias covered a lot of these topics in the last talk, on yeah. or two talks ago, I should say. Very well done. Very well done. Great, great talk. He's got great expertise there, so I always love hearing that. I pick up things from it every Absolutely. time. And I've heard it probably many times already. Uh -huh. Pick up something new every time. So different ways of doing that strategy. We can, uh, we can have a user purchase something up front, or we can kind of place it correctly in the game, uh, right? Like so there's a strategy. Yes. yes. So you can show them all these power-ups in the beginning or whatever they want to purchase. Right. You know what? That's not enticing to them. Yeah, you don't really want to taunt them. Yeah. So let's <laughs> so let's talk about how we can use uh, the Prime Thirty One plugin here. Wow, Prime Thirty One all over the place. All over the place. The now all the stuff that we're talking about. If you happen to have this code, or you are very comfortable writing Windows Store applications already, yeah, we have some great porting guidance, uh, integration guidance, so you can write your own code on the C Sharp XAML side, okay, and hook into an event on the Unity side. So you don't have to use a plugin here. You can write all of your own code there if you're comfortable doing that. Yeah, you can hook into an event on the Unity side, raise that event, and then trigger it off in your C Sharp project. Okay, uh, I believe in the session coming up uh, tomorrow. I think uh, Jaime and team are going to be covering some of those. Tactics as well. All right. I just want to point out, you don't have to use a plugin, but to me, I can drop it in my project. It makes it quite a bit easier for me to use, and it's free. So let's talk about it. Okay. In this case, we're going to bring in uh, Metro Essentials Unity package, and again, we also need P31 Metro Essentials added to that unprocessed DLLs. So hmm. we've looked at that now twice: yep. one for the Azure one, and one for the Metro. So Essentials. It seems like the same song and dance each time. That's right. Yeah. Uh, sure, you have Windows Store selected as the build. Yep. Now we do need one other thing here because the way that in-app purchases uh, operate is yes. you have your real live application, right? but then you have your application you're using during testing. Okay. And so that brings up a bit of, uh, as a friend of mine called it, two-thirds of a dilemma. Yeah. <laughs> two-thirds of a trilemma. He called it ah, dilemma. a trilemma. Two-thirds of a trilemma. <laughs> don't want to mess up that quote because Yeah, it, I want to understand this. So uh, on one hand, your application's running live, you're charging at something, a user's purchasing something, and right. it's charging your account. Okay. In test, the current strategy is there's a simulator that you can use. When you're coding a Windows Store application, there's this purchase simulator you can yeah. use. And so you, like playing with Monopoly money, we'll say. Yes, exactly. And so, um, in fact, I won't even say mm, yes. You know what, that is a good analogy. I like okay. that. <laughs> put on my top hat and my monocle. Now I've got, the, now I've got that scene from um, Ace Ventura stuck in my head now. <laughs> <laughs> when he dances the guy around. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we're going to add this license.xml to our exported project. And so we'll look at how we have to create that. OK. And let's get to this and look at an actual demo of doing this. Let's go. All right. So what we're going to do for our in-app purchases, we want this to entice the user when they die. Now, you're just really doing well in this game. Yeah. Right? And what game are we playing here? This is, uh, I don't want to get lost today. Let me see if I can see the name here. Zombie Pumpkins. Yeah, I think that's right. Oh. <laughs> I didn't even finish it. Again, reminds me of the scene from Ace Ventura. Chicago, yeah. Chicago. <laughs> I have to test these guys out a little bit. It's the oh, baddest last toes. session of the day. I yeah. know, I know. <laughs> Keep the energy high for a while, right? That's right. So uh, <laughs> here, uh, I did the exact same thing for this pause screen. Let me hide the pause screen so you can see our resurrection screen. Yeah. Simply a little dialogue here. Let's go back to our UI. It is the exact same thing. So a panel in the UI system. Okay. A panel is nothing more than an image. Uh, Unity, there was a lot of call for people to use, you know, usability. People wanted the panel, something that represents a panel. Even though it's just an image, yeah. it's still easy to just go ahead and create a panel, but it really is an image behind the scenes. So I create this panel, and inside of that panel, I have this little image right here. Okay. 
And inside of that little image, I have this little image. All right, so images within images. Images within images. How, down, how far down the rabbit hole does it go? <laughs> and then what I've used, so these are all child game objects. So, yep. of course, if we disable this top one, Our we parent. disable this top one right here, everything will get disabled with it as well. Makes sense. Now, what I did here was on my bottom resurrect image, because this is a child of this one, I could position this really anywhere I want. But I try to take advantage of the new anchoring system that's provided in a Unity 4.6. Wow. And I basically... So much easier. So I anchored this down here at the bottom center yes. of its parent. And then just adjusted its offset a little bit. So when I anchor it down here, let me show you. I can change these positions here. I can go like this, 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 this. I can anchor that all over. Okay. So I just anchored it kind of down there and just bumped it up a little bit here. It's good. He's good. All right. Now, I did a similar strategy here. I have some code. Let's go back to my code. Okay, here we go. Back in our screen Oops. manager. So, let me get rid of my screen manager, because actually this is going to be in my, in my game controller class. I probably could have, you know, being that it is a screen element, I probably could have put this in there as well. But to me, uh, this is an aspect that goes through my game orchestrator. So my okay. screen manager is just doing my pausing. Right. Uh, it really, maybe I could have renamed it like pause manager. <laughs> okay, makes sense. But uh, in this case, I, I consider this really an in-game experience application, that, uh, experience that I want to be controlled by my orchestrator of my game, which is my right. game controller class. And so when this starts up, I'm doing the exact same thing. Now, I just wanted to show you a difference in what I was talking about in kind of my uh, in the optimization thing that we did earlier today in module six, we did optimizations. Yeah. Talk about different ways of finding objects. Yeah, it looks like you're doing quite a bit of uh, searching in that. Scene. Yeah. So this right here is actually going to search through everything in my scene until it finds this dialog. A better say. thing I could have done here is find game object with tag ah. and just tagged it as something like resurrect over in Unity. Yep. I just want to show you this is kind there are of fewer tags to sort through. Fewer tags to sort through. Uh, actually, in this case, it looks through every single game object for its name, and remember, names can change. Yeah. In this case here, we're just looking at only objects that have a tag. So I want to show you both ways that I'm doing it. Okay. Uh, in this case, I would typically would stick with this all the time, but sometimes it's good to show you the the not as good way as well. Okay. So, resurrect dialog. It's going to find it. Actually, I'll tell you what. Why don't we fix that right now? So you can see how you can take code that you download from the net. Yeah. Although this was not code from the net, but just to show you. Well, if other people are downloading it uh, following the videos, it will be code from the net. And notice what I did here. I actually, so by default, the API selected was find game objects with tag. Ooh. I don't want to return multiple objects. I want Just the first one, one found with the tag resurrect. And creating a tag in Unity is extremely simple. It's going to do a background compile here. That's why we have that pause. I will go into my resurrect dialog. Untagged. I'm going to add a tag. Huh. Paste that text into there, resurrect. Automatically increases the size of our array. There we go. I just pasted a name into there. Easy enough. Easy enough. Then I'm going to go back to my resurrect dialog. It's still untagged. I actually have to come in here to my tag, do something with that, and that's easy enough. It's just, there we go. Hmm. Save that. Now, when this starts up, you should be able to find it. And ideally, I want to do the same thing with this one too and fix that, but we won't do that right now. First thing it does when it finds it, it hides it. I don't want that dialog showing up all the time. Now let's see where else this is used. Show resurrect purchase and hide resurrect purchase. All these two methods do, show the dialog yep. by setting active. Remember, that equates to? Right, turning it on or off. Turning on or off. That All it does is check this little checkbox. Okay. So I have two methods there, show and hide. Easy enough. Makes sense so far. If I want to find out where this is referenced, I can just right click and say show all references in Visual Studio. Ah, very nice. And here we find that it's calling decrement cross health. So my game controller is managing the center cross. So pumpkins yeah. come up and they attack that cross. Uh, the idea is when, um, when the health on that cross gets down, you die. Okay. So I have this really easy for this simple pr uh, demo purpose. The first time that cross gets hit by a pumpkin, yeah. it's going to show us our resurrect dialogue. Oh, okay. As opposed to having to wait a few minutes as I battle these pumpkins. First time that cross gets hit, we're going to show this purchase dialogue. Yeah. All right. Let's see what happens here. Kind of hinting that something greater could happen. Yes. So let's show what happens, and then we'll look at the actual code on what happens for our purchase. Where we go to actually have an in-app purchase class right here. So let's see what happens, and then we'll walk through the code on that. Yeah. 
Now, what I want to do on this case, because this is Windows Store specific code. Yes. This is meant when you do your Windows Store build. Okay. So let me make sure I have that selected as my build I platform. I thought you had all those DLLs in there before. Yep. So we need to act. Before. Yep. So we need to actually go back to our Visual Studio project. Yep. Now, I don't want anybody to confuse this with the Unity VS project, which is also Visual Studio. This is all my game development code. This is not my exported Windows Store project. Just to recap on that, all I did was I come to here, I build my project, that's where we're opening up this, this resulting project here. Okay. All right, so this is my resulting project. And in this project, we're gonna run it. This is the same one that we looked at for our live tiles, same one that we looked at for our privacy policy. Now let's see for our in-app purchase. Okay, let's see what happens here now. Now what I did was I configured this in-app purchase to be free. I should probably have that audio change. Okay, now I don't pause my game. Right. Because sometimes you see things still run in the background on game. Yes. So I wanted that kind of intentionally, you see things still going on there. You died, you could resurrect, or in this case, <laughs> I have no way for the user to get out of this. Oh. So they must purchase my net purchase. Ideally, you want a little... Probably not the best way of handling it. No, a little icon here just to hide that too, but this was kind of a quick implementation. Yes. Now, in this case, I have no kills yet, but imagine I've got like a thousand pumpkins that I just offed here. Yeah. So you know what? I've got great progress. I want to be want to high. Going. I want to be higher on your leaderboard. That's right. 300 isn't enough. I want to be higher. So now, now that we've all heard this audio a thousand times, let's just disable that audio real quick and switch back to this. All right. Resurrect. I click on resurrect. And now this uh -huh. is, this tells you right now, simulate this purchase because we are using the simulator. That's right. This is not a live published application. It's our monopoly money coming into play again. That's right. Now I can simulate what I want to return here. Huh. Um, okay means the user accepted it. Perfect. Invalid arg, out of memory, right, catastrophic failures, or fail. Like, so if I cancel this, this is going to fail. Yes. I, I want to okay this. As soon as that happens, there we go, we're back in the game. Now these, these pumpkins are only registering on the first hit. That's uh -huh. why we're not, why is it ending, right? This, this, this cross is still getting bit right now. Yeah. Let's kill one and then it'll happen again when the next one falls up. There we go. Ah, okay. Resurrect, okay. Died again. So again, I'm doing this intentionally just on one. Right, otherwise you offer some sort of delay uh, for, for you to kind of get your scene back in order. Yeah. So let's close that out and look at what I do in code. Yeah. So code is real, real easy here. I'm loading a license file. And the way that the Prime 31 plugin works is mm -hmm. if you happen to load a test license file, okay. it will use it. If you don't, it's live. So it's an easy way to switch back and forth. Yes. So because I'm doing my testing here, I'm just calling this. If I'm, if I'm going live in my app, I'll just comment that out. Mm -hmm. Now, the only other thing that I need here, there's two things. So one, we're gonna add this license file here, this, this code in the license file. And this license file, you actually have to bring into your resulting project. Okay. When you install the Prime31 plugin, yes. it brings in a license.xml file. All right. Contains all the stuff in it right here. So you take your license file and you bring it into your Visual Studio solution here, right there. I literally just dragged it and dropped it right into this project. Okay. And jumping out from Unity to do that is real easy. You can right click on any item. Open Explorer. And show Explorer, and then you can just come back over to your Visual Studio solution, drag it on over, bring it into your project and its root. And Perfect. There you go. So we've got that there. Referencing licensing file means go ahead and do this in trial mode, yep. trial licensing mode. And secondly, is I've got a purchase resurrection method. And it is a essentially a one line code right. to do your purchase. Now, so in this case, I'm requesting an app purchase on this. Mm -hmm. And here I'm showing my in-app purchase result. Yep, That's easy enough to do, right? So in actually the in-app, let me go into what- I mean, most prime, of that is really just the, the debug stuff you have in there. Let's go to our Prime 31 under our plugins. Metro store. Let me save this and open this one up here, here real quick. If you look at the source code that's provided with this, you'll see there's a bunch of options in here. So you can find out if your app is currently in a trial. Okay. Because you can offer a trial. Like let's say you want to do a three day trial of your application. Yeah. Uh, you can request an application purchase here. So you can say, hey, request an app purchase. Now you can do things like, um, actually I think he has an example down here. 
Consumables. Consumables, right? Yes. So there, there's a workflow with consumables. You have to have them purchase a consumable, report to consumable. In other words, fulfill the consumable. Yes. So there's demos in here on how to do that as well. The API itself is actually real, real easy. Request product purchase. And what you do with these, uh, these in-app purchases, let's say we want to do this as... Resurrection. We'll call this resurrection. Okay. And actually, I think I just realized a minor error in my code here. Let's talk through that. Okay. Yes, I actually did a minor error in my code here. And this so, is why I enjoy doing these kinds of talks. See? <laughs> this is a real world example of, of how you ran into an issue and how we can get out of it. With demos, you always find that you kind of are adding on uh, at the last minute. You're like, you know what? It'd be really cool to add this in. I was going to try to add that leaderboards in last minute. So you're always trying to kind of fit really yeah. cool content. You know, it shows that you, you know your around. code base very well that you can kind of bounce in and out at will. Cool. So. Resurrection. Yep. That is the name of our in-app purchase. Let's go ahead and rebuild this again here. Okay. We can regenerate this just like this. Now, Unity will not overwrite the project. It just overwrites the data folder in that project. Yes. Which happens to have all of your Unity code in it. That's right. So that's perfect. So all of my existing stuff does not get overwritten. Just my Unity code and assets get overwritten in there. So, so this should work just fine. We're going to come back over here. Okay. As we're slowly building up our player. Looking forward to playing this game again. So now, while that's building, let me talk about what this is. Yes. When you go into the store and you submit your application, one of the things you have to fill out is if you want to use in-app purchases and if you want to use uh, Microsoft's in-app purchase system. Okay. And, you know, there's just a few things, a couple pages you go through submitting your application. And when you choose it, it says, all right, what in-app purchases do you want to use? Hmm. In this case, you name it. You name it whatever you want to use. If this happens to be extra gun pack, this name must match the name when you're submitting your application. Ah. And you tell the store. You say, you know what? This is a whatever the price you want. It could be free, or you can charge up to like nine hundred ninety nine dollars for an in app purchase. Okay. Uh, I believe I recall Tobias saying. Um, I don't know if he mentioned it in his talk today or not, but. Uh, in their game, they had a a larger valued in app purchase. Yeah. And it was interesting that. Even though it seems like people might not click that a lot, they just want to get it. Actually, he may have talked about that today. There's a whole psychology. There is a, definitely psychology behind that. So this is the name of whatever we're going to have in the store. Let's go ahead and run this project now. We should have a very similar result here. Compile, deploy, run it. Click on play to get past that title screen. And here we go. Here we go. Now we're just going to get out of the way and let this happen fast. Let the pumpkins do their thing. Let the pumpkins do their thing. You died, resurrect. And something didn't work right on there. Who didn't get called? Who didn't get called? So, we didn't see an error pop up there, did we? I didn't see an error pop up there. Let's try this again. No. Well, anyway, so because I kind of did the live debugging on this, I'd have to go back and look at what exactly didn't get called in there. And I will definitely make sure that this is updated for the demo. Okay. Uh, we're going to open source this project so you can see it. Uh, I will make sure that this actually shows you the dialogue that you'll expect to see here. Ah, uh, perfect. And then this is the initial one that I had. So my app purchase was working great. <laughs> yes. It just wasn't the, uh, the other in-app purchase here, the product purchase. With the okay. Key. All right, so let's move on. In-app purchases, pretty yes. easy to implement, even though I had the wrong API call there. Saw that and go back and fix Looks that. Add the one. Simple enough. Privacy policy, this actually, uh, this is a quick slider that should have been a little bit prior. Okay. That actually brings us to the end of this session. But oh. you know what? I see that we have about 45 seconds left. Okay. So, <laughs> so we, could do, we could do something here. We could talk about zombie pumpkin slayers. <laughs> Have you had fun during this whole session? I've had an absolute great time. I have had a, a phenomenal time. I don't know about you, but there's a lot of work to kind of put this together, so I want to thank you for coordinating and organizing all of this. My pleasure. This has been a great time. Uh, folks that are watching this, please uh, fill out the survey. Your, yes. your information helps us make these events better. We absolutely love doing them. Uh, it's very rewarding. It's, I mean, this is, this is very fun being yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Your feedback is much appreciated. So the, the more detailed your feedback is, the more incentive we have to then come back and do this kind of thing again for you. Yes, and uh, just as a quick reminder, folks that are watching this live, tune in. We're going to do a quick little uh, thing after this. <laughs> Thank you again very much, and uh, please let us know any feedback and follow us on Twitter. We're always publishing out new things on gaming, and check out our blogs. We have a lot of good content, but thank you most of all for attending and watching us.